Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and the ancient records of HLJ have brought me to a figure of ancient Cybertronian history, who also happens to be the first fully original Transformers figure rendered in the style of Futures X Gokin aesthetic, which is not yet ancient. This is TFX Gokin Alpha Trion, a licensed third-party release under the 30th anniversary celebratories that seemed to open up the Transformers IP to a number of high-end toy makers. While a liberty or two have been taken, this is a very slavish representation of Alpha Trion's original appearances in the G1 cartoon. The sculpt keeps things animation simple with just enough surface detail to keep things interesting. The colors feel like they're on topic and create an interesting effect by using a lot of contrasting metallic colors and matte finish colors right next to each other. Alpha Trion's proportions are really nicely laid out, giving him a satisfying silhouette beneath his cape and regalia. And at the crest of that regalia is, finally, a head sculpt of a properly wizened Fu Manchurian Alpha Trion, resplendent in his enormously pop collar and side-swept spectacles. Nothing's toned down or foreshortened. His robot facial hair hangs down long and proud. Alpha Trion's fists can ball pop out of his wrist sockets to make use of his other hand options. There are also some open hands, vaguely calm, yet vaguely gesticulating. He's also got some gripping hands, despite having no accessories, but it's sized really well for 5mm pegs, which means you can arm this mustachioed mentor up with a huge variety of weaponry, provided you have a stash of compatible pieces. Finally, there's a spare pointing right hand for when Alpha Trion wants to make a friggin' point for you to friggin' listen to! His other accessories are a pair of alternate shoulder pads and an alternate head. Swap those in and remove his cape, and you've got A3! You know, from... That one season three episode with the time traveling aerial bots. Anyway, outside of some soft goods for an IDW look or a quill to reference the whole mythological angle, this is the main set of extra parts I'd hope to see on a G1 oriented Alpha Trion. Sadly, Future messed up and kept his youthful mustache white when it should be rowdier and Tom Selleck dark. It's a shame as the smoother A3 head sculpt has got some really sexy facial chisel. Also, don't look at him from behind, as he doesn't really hide any of the freshly exposed connective stuff on his back. It's like it was his destiny from birth to wear a cape. Alpha Trion also comes with a standard issue X Gokin display stand rendered in a yellow matrix glow, which ends up looking pretty urinary. There's a tiny little panel you can remove from A3's butt to let him connect directly to the stand, and the base can hook onto other X Gokin stands via the included underhook component. The stand arm has got a bit of play, but I can't see this thing allowing for crazy high-flying karate action. Which, as we all know, is Alpha Trion's signature fighting style. I'm gonna talk Trion for posability because he's got the most stuff on him and an extra joint in his chin. Uh, what do you mean, an extra joint in his chin, you crazy person? Let me tell you. His head's on a ball joint connection so it can waggle around like this, all like, you know, I know what I'm talking about. But if you want him to look up or down, like, you know, he's looking down here, and he's looking up, but he's got that, you know, chin thing. Well, it's on a joint! I really like that. And uh, it doesn't feel too flimsy either. It, it actually flows supernaturally when you have him look back down. It just runs down the center of his chest. His shoulder pads are real good at getting out of the way of stuff, and, you know, they slide around on these tracks. I like to try to keep them in here. I don't really see much gain from getting them all the way out here. But uh, they are good at staying out of the way of his shoulders, which are on a ball socket connection connected to an internal thingy there that can also come outwards a little bit uh, like that and uh, there's a hinge inside the shoulder itself uh, connected to the ball that goes into the socket in his torso so there's a real good range on here uh, in every direction there's a bicep swivel and an elbow joint it's a single elbow joint but like it gets deep uh, it looks a bit funny I think that the elbow it just feels like it's too low. Like, it feels like the place where the swivel is happening is where the elbow should be. Right? That's where the elbow should hinge, and the swivel should be up here somewhere. But for aesthetic reasons, you know, I can see how this resulted in what we got. His wrists are ball socket connected, and there's just enough of a cup in there so you can actually get them to do some uh, ovular waggle. So that's pleasant. He has a simple waist joint. And then he's got another joint... And uh, when he got, came out of the package, this other joint was actually bent like that. So this joint that I wish was just a hinge has also got a little bit of give to swivel left and right. And then his waist joint has a bit of give as well. It locks. 
uh, here and here, so it can't go crazy contortionist style, but it is kind of annoying that it's real easy for you to twist this part and get all the, uh, the alignment out of whack there for no real good reason or gain. I guess it works in tandem with that to give them a bit more of a natural twist. You know what, maybe I, I see what it's doing here. I just wish that it was a bit clearer. Um, also, I wish that anything in here ratcheted, uh, but we'll get to that more when we get down to his legs. His cape can flap, and then if you don't want it to just flap like one big plank, you can do this, add these to it, and then get it going out like, you know, dual scarves or something. I think the way they did the cape here is super freaking cool. Uh, especially because it's still like a circuit board cape, and it just doesn't make any sense, but I don't care. His front skirt chunks are ball socket connected into the sides of his hips, so the rear skirt chunk kind of never gets out of the way. So if you want his leg to go backwards, it's a bit limited, but I don't know why you'd want to do that, because it can go forwards just fine. Uh, the hip connection, I don't know how I feel about it, because it is just a ball socket connection. He has... SH Figure Arts hips. Like, you can pull... Well, you can also pop these off. I had to pop these off to add some floor polish in there because, like, it's a Figure Arts hip, right? It does this thing. It's got a thigh swivel cup in there. You can see the ball socket joint in there. Those ball socket joints were not able to deal with the fact that his... Like, this chunk of his leg is a big piece of die cast. I would move his leg up like this, and this one in particular would go... Nyeh immediately gravity would yank it back down so i you know pulled this thing off and then i don't want to pull this off because i think that'll mess up some of the tension of the floor polish that's in there but i was able to you know get his leg off there and there's just a you know a ball socket ball sticking out of the pelvis dipped it in some floor polish and boom be careful when you do it because there's a little bit of tension everywhere and, and uh, I, I was taking a risk in doing so i fully admit but i think it was worth it because now his hip joints can actually deal with the weight of his die cast content and I don't blame the die cast this is an ex Goken toy I blame the hips for being frigging SH Fig Arts ball socket hips on a toy with gigantic die cast under legs and with poor tension at that those should have been ratchety joints there's a thing here where you can pull the knee down to get like a super full knee bend and again this is where some clickety clickety ratchet stuff would have been real wonderful it would have just felt good especially with all the the heavy metal going on down here um, but yeah, there's an extending leg deal here, because if it's not extended, you can only bend it, you know, so far. Then you can extend it, bend it a little bit farther. It's a cool piece of design. I just, I don't know. I feel like ratchet joints would have made this feel like a fantastic complete figure, and as it is, it just feels like something's very minorly missing. As for his ankles, uh, his feet are connected in here separately, but, uh, you know, they, due to the sculpting design, there's some stuff getting in the way of their range. They can just click down a click. And uh, I'm even going to do that in focus because I care about you guys. Because because I love you all. I did it. I did it. And this allows for a real nice uh, ankle tilt and a little bit more, um, you know, foot tap in action. And it's kind of cool, like, when you, when you take a look at how you can have his legs all like this and then... You know, yank down the fig arts hip, extend that, extend that. Like, his, his, there's a lot of uh, revealable range in here. His posability's fine. This is, a, this is a cool figure, but it definitely is lacking some much-needed ratchet action. And on a stock version, those hip ball joints were terrible. Uh, it was a very easy fix, but be aware of that if you go into this guy that uh, you might want to get in there and tighten things up, at least on my copy. Uh, maybe this was a standalone freak occurrence. If you've got one, let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like the posability on this dude, uh, just in terms of the range and the expressiveness and uh, the, the, the cocky levels of emotion of this old man with his built-in sunglasses. Future's Alpha Trion is by far the best figure on the market for the character as of this recording. He's decently poseable, scaled all right for standing amongst Neo classics, and able to make use of a lot of accessories despite not including many of his own. Sadly, I can't see him working in a masterpiece display as he seems just a bit too short when set next to Optimus or any of the Hasui car robots. His $80 to $100 cost provides some hefty die-cast content and very eye-catching paintwork, but also brings a higher expectation of quality that is backhanded pretty roughly by his very lackluster leg joint tolerances. 
Those hips, at the very least, needed to be detented in some way, and for his high price tag, I was disappointed to see straight up ball joints under his pelvic plating. At least elderly Alpha Trion isn't a regularly athletic character. If you aren't prepared to tighten those ball joints yourself, he still stands fine in most non-gymnastic postures. It's mostly when you're holding him in your palms moving stuff around that it can get, like, freaky ragdoll down there in his groin. This is a premium piece in a niche line that's aimed more at high-end Gokin collectors than Transformers fans, but Futures A3 is definitely the one licensed piece they've released that's worth the consideration of Cybertronian hardcores. For now, you won't find a better Alpha Trion. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and Future have also released X Gokin figures for Optimus Prime and Grimlock. They're a lot weirder than Alpha Trion, to say the least. And while I'm not sure if I'm going to do coverage of them, Rocket Punch Army has taken a look at all three of these guys. So check that stuff out if you want an alternate perspective. But if you want some coverage on this channel, I mean, let me know. I can't make guarantees, but I can send emails.